Okay, next I'd like uh, to talk about a different target uh, technology. Next I'd like to talk about uh, reconfigurable hardware. Reconfigurable hardware has already been included in uh, this energy efficiency diagram. Over here you see that with uh, so-called field programmable gate arrays we can actually achieve a very good energy efficiency. Field programmable gate arrays can bring us pretty close to the energy efficiency of uh, ASICs. So therefore I think it's interesting to look at uh, this technology and to see what these FPGAs can do for us. So what are actually FPGAs? Well FPGAs are a special case of so-called uh, reconfigurable uh, logic. Reconfigurable logic is motivated by the fact that uh, custom hardware may be too expensive uh, but software may be too slow. So therefore we are trying to combine the best of the two worlds. We are trying to combine the speed of hardware with the flexibility of software. So as a result we are obtaining hardware with uh, programmable functions and programmable interconnect and in this way we are arriving at uh, so-called configurable hardware. We are also talking about configware and uh, in uh, a very particular case we are uh, talking about so-called field programmable gate arrays or FPGAs. We will see how FPGAs will typically look like. Uh, first of all let's uh, look at some applications. What do we use uh, FPGAs for? Well, FPGAs can be used for special purpose uh, uh, algorithms, algorithms where we have a lot of parallelism because FPGAs do provide us with uh, a lot of chances for parallel execution. So all algorithms that can be parallelized are candidates for, um, uh, for an application in an FPGA. So for example, decryption and encryption can be done efficiently in FPGAs and indeed uh, some of the most cost-effective devices for uh, breaking codes are consisting of uh, FPGAs. Also in bioinformatics we do need a lot of uh, uh, pattern processing and this pattern processing can be done in parallel. So therefore FPGAs also find applications in bioinformatics. Also FPGAs are very fast. Uh, they uh, are inheriting this feature from uh, application specific hardware and therefore we can use them in applications where a very high performance is required. So for example uh, they are a very frequently used uh, target platform in high energy physics. And there are other cases of high speed uh, special purpose hardware uh, where we can take advantage of the features of FPGAs. There are popular devices available from a variety of companies including Xilinx, Actel, Altera and also others. And in this course I will use uh, Xilinx devices as examples. Other devices may be looking slightly different but I think it's sufficient just to look at these uh, Xilinx devices. Now uh, how are uh, the Xilinx FPGAs composed of uh, their components? Well in Xilinx FPGAs this is uh, the overall floor plan that we see for popular devices. Uh, we have a, uh, a boundary of uh, the chip on which we implement an FPGA and in the center area of the chip we have a area that's used for configurable logic. If we look a little closer, this is uh, what we can see there. Uh, in this uh, center area we have so-called configurable logic blocks. Uh, these are uh, placed uh, in some uh, very regular layout and in addition to that we might have some more specialized blocks there. For example it's very common to have a special block RAM there because these CLBs are very inefficient when we use them uh, just to implement memory. And also it turns out that CLBs would not be very efficient if we try to implement multipliers. So therefore there are special areas that contain some multipliers and we will see a little later on that there are some more special specialized blocks that are available with some uh, of these uh, FPGAs. 
Now these uh, different uh, CRBs, as shown on the previous slide, uh, they can be uh, connected to each other through uh, programmable links and uh, the different FPGAs contain different uh, techniques for uh, linking these uh, different uh, CRBs together. So for example, uh, the rather early Vertex uh, 2 devices from, from Xilinx uh, allowed so-called hierarchical routing resources. We have certain lines that uh, run over a significant portion of uh, these uh, chips. And then we have so-called hex lines, which run only over a limited portion of these chips. And then we have double lines, which run even uh, over a much uh, shorter distance. And then we have direct connections to the neighbors. So in this way, we are able to connect these uh, CRBs to each other. And the way in which the, these are connected is part of the configuration. Now, in addition to these uh, uh, Vertex 2 devices, uh, Xilinx has made available other uh, FPGA devices. Uh, these include the Vertex 5, 6, and 7 devices. However, I didn't find any routing plan for the Vertex uh, 7 devices. But for the structure of these CRBs, I will be referring to these uh, Vertex 7 devices. So how do uh, look these uh, CRBs like? Well, these CRBs uh, can be decomposed hierarchically into smaller components. Uh, these uh, CRBs in these Vertex 7 devices contain so-called uh, uh, slices. We have uh, two slices. For each of these uh, slices, uh, we have one carry input, we have one carry output, and we assume that these uh, slices uh, can be used for implementing uh, adders uh, for a certain number of bits. And these two slices are tightly connected through uh, an associated uh, switch matrix. So this means that we can now hierarchically uh, look further into the details of uh, these uh, slices. And this is a more detailed view onto these uh, slices. Uh, Vertex 7 slices contain uh, four different memories. Uh, memories that uh, include uh, 16 four bits of uh, 64 bits of uh, storage and uh, these bits can be addressed using six address lines and therefore uh, each of these memories can be used to implement any boolean function of uh, up to six uh, variables. Now, in addition uh, to uh, these 64-bit uh, memories, uh, we have a certain number of multiplexes and we have one register that can, can be programmed to uh, be edge-triggered or level-triggered in the way that we need this in our overall uh, system. In uh, these uh, rather recent devices from Xilinx, no processors are available in the very early Vertex 2 uh, uh, slices, in the Verti uh, Vertex 2 uh, FPGAs. Uh, certain processors were uh, available as so-called hard cores. They were already fabricated during fabrication time. Now it's becoming more and more common to uh, transition towards uh, so-called soft cores. That means we uh, can implement uh, processes there uh, using these uh, uh, different uh, uh, slices there. And we need a number of slices for each processor that we would like to implement in an FPGA. Now next I'd like to look a little closer at the details of uh, one slice of uh, uh, the so-called uh, slice M, which is a special type of slice in these Vertex uh, 7 devices. Uh, there we do see again uh, these uh, memories, we see these registers over there, and we also see the path for, for the carry. Uh, so this uh, suggests that we can uh, compute uh, uh, the uh, sum over a total of four bits using one of uh, these uh, slices. Now a related question may be the question, how large are these FPGAs actually? 
And in order to demonstrate that these FPGAs can indeed be pretty large, I'd like uh, to refer to the largest device that's available for this uh, Vertex uh, 7 family of uh, devices. I'm referring to this uh, particular device over here. Uh, this device includes uh, a total of a uh, little over 300,000 slices and this can be uh, converted into the equivalent number of logic cells taking into account that for each uh, uh, slice we have uh, we can implement any boolean function of uh, six variables so therefore this converts uh, to close to two um, a billion uh, 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 logic cells two million logic cells sorry not not too many um, then in um, addition we can look at the uh, n uh, number of bits that are available there in a distributed form that means in these uh, different CRBs and we can see that uh, there is uh, about uh, there are about uh, 21 uh, megabits available in distributed form and on top of that there are about uh, uh, 42 megabits available there uh, in the form of uh, block RAMs. Now since many of these FPGAs are uh, placed on the board and then inserted into a PC, it, it is now widespread to also provide uh, PCI Express interfaces so that uh, these uh, boards uh, can really very easily be interfaced with uh, the bus that is widespread in, in PCs. Also, there are a couple of uh, high-speed uh, transceivers that can be used to connect to the outside world. And interestingly, I think especially in the context of cyber-physical systems, it's good to know that there are or, or that there is also one AD converter uh, on uh, this device, and there are analog multiplexes, so that a number of analog channels is also available. Uh, there are uh, 1,200 user I/O pins uh, that can be uh, connected uh, to uh, the uh, environment. The uh, speed that's uh, achievable with uh, these devices is really impressive. And in this case, I'd like to distinguish between the different variants of these uh, Vertex uh, 7 devices. Uh, from uh, any one of these uh, transceivers, we can obtain a speed of uh, up to 28 uh, gigabits per second. If we take into account that we have a number of these uh, transceivers there on each of these FPGAs, we can uh, see that uh, we can achieve a, a bidirectional bandwidth uh, of about uh, 2.5 uh, terabits per second, which I think is uh, really impressive. Um, also, it's interesting to see how many operations we can perform uh, there on uh, such a FPGA uh, chip. We see that uh, there are up to 5,000 billion MAC operations that we can perform per uh, second, uh, which is really a very uh, impressive uh, number. And uh, then uh, the number of bits that we can store there in these block RAMs uh, is uh, depending on uh, the variant that we are using there of these uh, Vertex 7 devices. And also the number of I.O. pins is uh, slightly uh, depending on uh, the variant that we are using there. So this is what I wanted to say about these uh, FPGAs. FPGAs are uh, a means of uh, implementing uh, custom uh, designs without incurring the cost of a um, custom designed uh, hardware uh, but still we can achieve a speed that is usually not achievable uh, with using software running on a processor. So that concludes uh, the second uh, third of uh, this lecture today and now I'm moving towards uh, the uh, last third of this lecture.